This week at Brewgrass Homebrew Supply, the boys are talking mash chemistry. Temperature, to be exact. They'll also be spilling some beans on Kentucky Craft Bash. So grab yourself a beer and settle down. Hot work. Yeah, we're brewing one of our favorite beers here, the High Horse IPA. Just a quality drinking beer. Something we will make a keg of, and it's gonna be gone by this time next month, basically. Hoppy, West Coast. Nice little bite, cluster hops to bitter it. Basically, I don't even think we repeat on the flame at hops. It's just a little bit of everything. It's like some centennial, some citrus, some amarillo, some mosaic. So yeah, it's a damn good beer. And just that really nice grain bill where it's not too malty. There's no crystal malt in there. Um, and that's one important thing that we also want to talk about is just, uh, you know, we were heating up the water here. We accidentally overshot by a few degrees. Uh, that was my bad. Yeah, our target mash temp. But it um, happens from time to time. It happens. So we just, you know, cut the heat and we were waiting a little bit for that to cool off. Um, and I just, you know, that it occurred to me that that's something, you know, we're asked about quite frequently. So, John, maybe if you could explain to us a little bit uh, why it's so important, what temperature uh, that you start to steep your grain at, or yeah, otherwise sure. called mash, mash the grain, yeah. mash in. So really it's kind of like, we're doing a partial mash brew here, so it's not as important as long as you're not getting over like 170 degrees. That's the number one number to keep in your mind, especially just, you know, when you're starting out, because if you get over 170, in addition to dissolving all the sugars and the enzymes, you're gonna start to pull tannins out of the grain husks. Which is just like, I don't know, if you've ever like steeped black tea too long or just gotten it too hot, it kinda just tastes like astringent. 170 degrees is when you're gonna start pulling those flavors out. So that's the number one thing to remember. So that's like way too hot. To avoid that. Ideally, you know, most recipes will tell you to mash or steep the grains at 150 to 155. Sometimes you'll see them upper and lower from there. And I guess really what you're trying to do by targeting that specific temperature is control how the starches get converted over into simple sugars, or rather what enzymes, I should get the props that we use during our classes, which enzymes that are also present inside of these grains do most of the work converting the big long starch molecules down into smaller chunks of fermentable sugar. If you're steeping a little bit warmer, so if the temperature of your like mash or the temperature of your pot is, you know, let's say between like 154 and 157 to what you mean, 158, you're really gonna be favoring what they call alpha amylase enzymes. And if you do favor alpha amylase enzymes, what's gonna happen when they are breaking that starch up, these guys are going around chopping all those starches up into sugars. Alpha amylase are extremely effective and quick at breaking stuff down, but they're not very methodical. So what that's gonna do is kind of just break down big pieces of starch into just kind of big, awkward chunks of sugar. Some of it will be fermentable, which basically means that there'll be small enough chunks for a yeast to fit inside of their mouths and turn into alcohol. Uh, but some of the chunks are gonna be left over so big that it's gonna be too complex of a sugar for a yeast to metabolize or to ferment, which is gonna result in more unfermentable stuff in your beer, i.e. a sweeter final product. Or we had a customer recently who couldn't figure out why their beers just on a consistent basis weren't attenuating all the way. We went through everything, yeast management, uh, the pitch rate, the fermentation temp. Finally, we figured out that he was steeping his grains consistently at like 160 degrees, which basically meant he had a lot of unfermentability left inside of his wort. Uh, on the other hand, if you steep a little bit cooler, maybe say 148 to that, okay, 152, 154 range, you're favoring beta amylase enzymes. And they're not quite as aggressive. They're just like a little more subtle and slow acting enzymes. But what that means is they are incredibly methodical in how they break those sugars down. So they kind of start nibbling on the end. These terms are all obviously kind of metaphors that don't really apply to them, but it at least helps me think about it. They'll start nibbling away at those long starch chains and breaking them down into really, really small, almost or very nearly all fermentable sugars. 
what that's going to result in is the yeast being able to eat up basically everything that was inside of that, producing a very dry or a very crisp and clean or very low final gravity, uh, very well attenuated beer. The 152 to kind of 155 range, that is a temperature where both of these guys can play very well together. So you'll get a lot of this stuff breaking down. You'll get a lot of this stuff coming back and cleaning up. Okay. So that makes if sense. If you want a me medium bodied beer, not too dry, you remember the, like, what is it, Three Bears or whatever? Like, sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that Goldilocks. Kind of Goldilocks zone, yeah. if you will. Is like like, uh, like in space where the yeah, aliens where are going to live. Are. Yeah. So, like, yeah, that's the Goldilocks zone where everything can kind of cohabitate and work together. And, you know, you'll have a little bit of sweetness. It's not going to be so bone dry that there's no malt flavor left. Uh, but it's also not going to be so malty that you're going to, you know, it's going to taste more like a barley wine, even if you're trying to make like a brown ale or something like that. So, you know, that's kind of why you want to be mindful. And again, it's not so important on a partial mash scale like we're doing here. Uh, but if you practice doing that on a partial mash scale and just really dialing in that mash temperature, when you are going bigger to like brew in a bag or if you're just going to like a full, you know, multi-tiered mash system or whatever, or if you have ambitions of starting your own brewery one day, that's like, I think one of the best things that I really focus on because especially in an all grain batch, the fluctuation of four or five degrees, uh, you know, you could produce the exact same beer mashed a few degrees apart and they would come out not night and day, but noticeably different. Uh, so yeah, I think that's the question that we, we do get that comes up. What are some good websites to go to to look at, you know, calculators for mash temperatures and yeah, stuff sure. like that? If you're watching this, uh, check out the learn page on Bluegrass Homebrew Supply. We're working on one. But if you go there and there's nothing there yet, I use a website called uh, brew365.com. You click on a little button on the side called mash calculator or water calculator, and it gives you like a little set of variables you can plug in. Tells you how hot to, see, to kind of heat up your water to, yeah. so when you mix it with your grains, it ends up right at the mash temperature that you want. Makes it really easy that way. Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right. So, yeah, we're gonna keep brewing here. Uh, if you guys are watching at home, soon, next Saturday, Kentucky Craft Bash. It's like the penultimate uh, Kentucky Beer Festival. The beer list this year is freaking awesome. Oh, let's zoom in on that, yeah. I guess. Uh, the Kentucky Guild of Brewers has done a great job of putting this on, and uh, Willet Distillery is kind of the fun beer sponsor. They're going to have the Willet booth where every participating brewery got a Willet barrel, um, which is a great bourbon. If you're not here in Kentucky, they make phenomenally good spirits. But then they aged a beer inside of that barrel, and some people went what you'd expect, like an old big stout or something, but there's a whole bunch of different options. So if you have not picked up your Craft Bash tickets, I think there's still quite a few left, but they're definitely going to be sold out day of the event. So we'll put a uh, link to the place you can get tickets down below. Go snag one. When we tour, we'll be there. We'll be live streaming all day. So if you see, see me or Sam or Ricky, come up and say what up. And maybe we'll have some like 10% off coupons from the store or something like that too. But uh, yeah, it's shaping up to be a pretty good, uh, pretty good, what? Hot, sticky. Very hot right June. now. <laughs> yeah. But we're making some beer that'll help us kind of cool off. And uh, yeah. Any other thoughts? Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you have a beer question that needs an answer, reach out to us. Leave a message down below or find us anywhere, Instagram, Facebook, on social media, and we'll try to get back to you. If it's a really good question, maybe it'll pop up in a future episode. Again, we can't thank you guys enough for all the support. We hope you have a great beginning of the real summer. God, how hot is it going to get? And until next time, for something awesome.